Determination seems like the best word to describe the collective response of Ukrainians as they fight for their country, for their home, and their freedom. They're putting on a show of determination that astounds the rest of the world who watch from afar. Hello, I'm Dale Doherty, and welcome to MakeCast. One month ago, I spoke with Yuri and Svetlana Vlasyuk, who live in Kyiv. That was the day Russia invaded Ukraine. The situation is tough. Yeah. Uh, you probably you know, see the news. Yeah. So we are not okay. We are not calm. We're thinking about leaving Kyiv at the moment. Probably we should move to closer to Poland later. So we still monitor the news. So it, it's not calm at all. I got to know Yuri and Svetlana because they were co-producers of 15 maker fairs in five cities in Ukraine dating back to 2015. Personally, I understand that there will be a next step after invasion in 214. So the idea was to show communities another way to gather, to communicate, to talk to each other, to learn from each other, to make projects together. This idea led to our situation in 2015. 15, 2016, perfectly, because we show to communities this format you gave us, and this was a kind of uh, celebration of in, in communities in all five cities. So now these people communicate each other, it helps our army, helps to recover communities. So idea of uh, building community and of producing Make a Fair was to spread the trust inside the communities. And the Ukrainians are very mm, interested in new, fresh movements, especially uh, we are a technical nation. A lot of technical universities, so a lot of people are, have really strong math, some physics. So there is, uh, uh, here you can meet this tradition. And a lot of factories, mm -hmm. they, unfortunately, yes, they, they were lost during Soviet time, but people, they still have this knowledge, uh, how to fabricate, how to do something. And we were about to lose it. And so that's what we were looking for in Maker Fair, in Maker's Movements, why we were so inspired when we first met, saw the Make Magazine. And after we saw the event and it was like, Wow, it's just what we need. I asked them what they expected to be doing during the war. Keep calm, help army, help <laughs> army. Give me a drone or help me fix something. Yeah. We need a fuel, please help. Or <laughs> we, we hear a lot of resistance and we're happy we are in such a huge community and a lot of people stays here don't move ab ab abroad or to other country and we clearly understand that with all the help from Canada from US from UK we have to fight by ourselves we are understand yeah. that there's no one who will fight for our country so I am happy to talk to people to have such a, a huge network of people who will resist, and now they are. The week after I talked to them, I learned that Svetlana and the rest of the family had managed to leave the country. Yuri remained behind, but because Kiev was being bombarded, he was sleeping on a mat on the floor in the hallway, away from any windows. This is weird and scary, he wrote, but less and less from day to day. And our determination is rising. We will fight for home. Two weeks after talking to him, Yuri wrote that the makers who had left or relocated had returned. I'm in contact with those who came back to their shops, he said, and started production and repairs. Makers in Kharkiv are buying sheets of plastic and helping people to close windows and doors after Russian shelling. One month after we talked, one month into this war, I talked again with Yuri and I asked about Svetlana and his family. That evening, we leave Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine. We leave uh, towards Lviv, and now Svetlana in Germany with kids. Uh, she's safe now. But she's doing okay. 
Yes, she, she is almost totally fine. Yeah, yeah, thanks to our friends in Germany. Yeah. It must be difficult to be apart, though. I I don't ever feel something like this before. Today, it, it kind of month of war, first mo- full month of war, and uh, now we are uh, in closer contact with all the community. So uh, a lot of people ask me what to do, how to help. Just a huge amount of requests. Uh, I have a lot of contact in 3D printing community because I, I produce this reprop festival and a lot of people want to help they have own machines so they have some filament uh, or materials and they don't know uh, who can they help how to help and who to help so i decided to get them uh, i produced a, a webinar two hours ago uh, it, there was 48 people of all over over the country there was two of five local 3D printing filament manufacturers. They all are struggling now. One of them lost his manufacturing facilities because Russians captured the city. Uh, He had uh, manufacturing facilities in, and the second one also could not produce as much as uh, he used to before the war because of lack of people, lack of uh, supply. Yuri had written that manufacturing employees, many of whom are elderly, could not get to work because of the bombing. So we announced these future difficulties that we will have, and this is the signal for people who are trying to produce something, the signal to make some stock or to try to import, for example, from Poland or from other European countries, uh, supplies. And also, there is never about 3D printing only. There was a lot of questions about drone repairing and about uh, microcontrollers. And so this community is kind of uh, broader and wider than, than 3D printing only. Of course, it's logical because yes. they not just print, they're trying to produce some product. We also talk about big machines or poly jet fuel um, packet machines that some of community members have uh, on their manufacturing facilities. And they also offer help to if someone wants to produce uh, quickly what they needed. So uh, there's a kind of support support chain or support community. We talked about this before, Dale, that these people who attend or take part in, in a fair or uh, take part as attendees, the, the, the most of them, they, they are people who care, who want to help to, to negotiate, to, to make this chain work. So I'm happy I know all these people. Huge, huge relief. What are some of the things that are being made in response to the war? Or what are the needs? It's not, it, it not uh, what uh, people from worldwide community will like, but the, the most helpful things community made for army. Mm-hmm. He mentioned that helping the army was the best thing they could do by repairing and upgrading equipment. For example, uh, there is a team who buy cheap night vision devices and using uh, Raspberry Pi Zero make them more capable products. Mm-hmm. Teams work on flight stabilizers for mines that that are dropping from drones. So I, I know a lot of people in community didn't like the, this kind of activities, but yeah. this is the things we need right now. And this small batch manufacturing working just perfect. So few more teams working on disassembling old electric car battery cells testing mm-hmm. them and produce from them a kind of power banks for civilians, for territorial defense and for this front line when soldiers need uh, power, any kind of power. Yeah. I don't know how they go, but makers from Lithuania, from Vilnius, will ship us more these cells from the electric cars in good condition. So I am I am excited about this, and uh, we met with with uh, part of that Vilnius 
uh, Lithuania team at one of our maker fair in Odessa city. What is life like for you day to day? Do you feel under threat? Yeah, yeah. It's reminders we have uh, more than, I think more than 20 times a day we have reminders that we yeah. under threat. Especially when I go outside, I'm trying to restore my business. I have orders and trying to deliver them. And uh, I heard in city and over the city a lot of artillery and anti-missile systems, even if you have two hours, quiet hours, for example. And this is a kind of relaxation. And then you, I get these reminders. So, b But after one month, I just very thankful to universe that we have less reminders than other Ukrainian city, as Kharkiv, for example, or Mariupol. It's it just something terrible happens there. I know people from Kharkiv, a lot of makers. I have information from them. I know some people from Mariupol. Uh, the city council, before the war, city council invited us twice to make mini maker fair in Mariupol city. I, I uh, didn't have resources that time to produce this uh, maker fair in Mariupol, but was invited to. Yeah. Now I, I am in, I, I'm also trying to remind comparison. If I feel not safe in, in Kyiv, I am trying to imagine how it in Kharkiv city, for example. And I'm just, again, I'm thankful for the universe, for our armed forces that we are in this almost safe conditions now. This is also a reminder uh, for me to, to do something I can do for community, uh, to fix something, to connect people that can help. This also a kind of all day reminder for me. Are you hopeful that Ukraine will get through this? Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. In first days, there was some, some scare, some disappointment and my personal shock also because my kids and family was too close to to this to the beginning of the war now after they are in in safe environment and safe and very helpful environment now i can feel just more productive or more focused back to your question yeah <laughs> i feel that we can stand. Dale, my, my day starts from the news, uh, from exact sources I know, from people I people. know personally, and I live in this context. I, know, I understand that the whole world lives in different contexts because it's not so close as to us. As I know from news, your country and a few other countries and, and more and more countries each day are uh, helping more to Ukraine to stand or to go through this. So yeah. this is why I'm hopeful, Dale. Are you able to get food and water and basic necessities? Yes, the all basic necessities in my district. And I also drive to other districts uh, in the city and uh, sometimes I'm in distant districts there there is a line to the grocery stores line to the streets but basic needs we can cover almost all around the city I know the uh, other cities and small suburbs some of them they are struggling and they are uh, under control of uh, Russian troops, or there is fighting there right now, so they have real problems. Yeah. And as for me and for Kiev, we're good, I think. Yeah. In in these all conditions, we we good now. But certainly, other parts of the country are getting hit uh, a lot worse. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, and we also have a, a, a f uh, maker friends in in two more cities. It's Sumy. This is the uh, 
Ukrainian region that uh, have a border with Russia and a city called Sumy. I know makers from this city and they also 3D printing parts for the armored forces. And they ask today, they ask for help. They need more filament from us. So I'm going to send them some, some uh, I have now in stock. Yeah. And also Cher Chernihiv, this is a very, very old Ukrainian city. They are also struggling and, and uh, we also uh, send in help and, and a lot of other supplies also, yeah. Um, just curious, have you heard from any Russian makers? From Russian friends, yes. Yeah. I heard because I used to live in Russia some some time, and I have some classmates. They send me a few messages, and I I, I ask them not to send me more because they are in danger with this mess, with this kind of mess. But not from Russian makers. From 2014, personally, I try try to distance from Russian communities because I know a kind of temperature in that communities. Mm -hmm. And I, I know from that time I didn't change their mind or I, I can't be a kind of friend or part of their maker community. I know it from, from that time. I'm trying to focus to developing community here in Ukraine for good and not to connect to Russian makers for now. On the other side uh, of your border, any connections with makers in Hungary or Poland? Yeah, yeah, of course. In Makerspace in Hungary, we met when we traveled uh, a few years ago. They offer help. They offer their kit. They develop educational kits for makers, and they offer us to make translation and use it for the temporary disposed persons. I don't, I don't like this. Refugee, right? Uh, War, so yeah. Yeah. yeah, refugees. They are a lot of makers in Poland offers help, sending filament, sending parts. Uh, uh, right now, they also help to find medicine or uh, pills we yeah. we didn't have in stock now, uh, and they help a lot. Can things get shipped to you? Yes, we have a logistical company, and the shipping was a kind of. I'm sending something today in the evening and next morning people get that. Now it takes three days to get something from Kiev suburb to Kiev uh, city. Yeah, right. But there's a lot of, lot of cars, a lot of volunteering supplies back and forth. And if we need something badly or something urgent, we can fix it because we have a huge network. One of the things that really strikes me is that in this kind of time, it really matters that people cooperate with each other and work together. That is a tool in itself, right? When people yeah. can yeah. talk, communicate, help each other, regardless of their expertise or background. Once again, I'm happy that I dive in this makers community movement because this is, this, it was exactly a tool not only events by themselves, but event uh, preparation, this small meetups, or even posts uh, in on Facebook pages about projects all over Ukraine, projects from other countries, but not for the money kind of project. And, and this was a, a marker for people who ma was magneted to the community and now they just doing the best. Is there anything I haven't touched on that you want to say? Yeah, we have a hacker space here uh, called Hack Lab. Uh, yeah. They are eight years or nine years old. Before the war, they produced events to to get funding for the hacker space. Mm -hmm. So be, uh, I know these people uh, close enough. And I ask them every time, what is your most popular activity in hackerspace? You are hackers, so, so what is the most popular? So the most popular was welding classes. After announcing of welding class, there was up to 40 minutes to fulfill all 10 or 12 seats. Just for 40 minutes, 40 every minutes. time it was. <laughs> and this, is, this was the most, uh, the most popular uh, class in hackerspace, you know? 
Yuri had sent me a picture from Hack Lab where they had welded a, a road obstacle that would puncture the tires of any vehicle crossing over it. He shared a set of inspiring photos of volunteers in workshops in Kiev welding, making road obstacles to slow down tanks and other vehicles. Dmitry Kovalenko took these photos. He's a video producer and photographer helping international journalists cover the war in Ukraine. We will feature one of these photos in the next issue of Make Magazine. If you'd like to help out with a donation, go to makerhub.org support. Yuri tells me that they can't work with PayPal, Stripe, or other payment processors, so you have to wire money to the bank. And the instructions are on the page, and I can confirm that they work. Let us know what you need, okay? Okay, thank you. Good luck. MakeCast is brought to you by the members of Make Community, who support makers in their community and around the world. To learn more about membership, visit make.co.